with yet another DJ Brewtube beer review. You know what, guys? I've been out in the sun working again. More grill work, more yard work. What am I doing this for? Why am I so crazy every weekend? Because you got to keep mama happy, don't you? Because if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Now, are they? Shake your head, no. Anyways, I need a refreshing beer. And where am I going to go to get said refreshing beer? I'm going to go to Fat Heads Brewery out of Middleburg, Ohio, U.S. of A. Yay, yay. And I'm going to have their new beer, which is Sunshine Daydream. Now, this is a sessionable ale. It doesn't say sessionable IPA on the bottle. It says sessionable ale though it is kind of classified as an ipa because it's pretty hoppy for what it is now where did you get said beer you saying dj because they ain't um you know distributing any fat heads in your area in maryland hell no i got it from my good buddy average joe thanks a million joe if you haven't watched joe well that's because he hasn't posted a videos on his channel but you can see him do reviews on the albino rhinos channel and i will put a link down here in the notes section so enough of that what about the beer this is a 4.9 percent abv and 60 ibu brew so it's Fairly low alcohol and pretty high IBU. So we got lots of alpha acids in this bad boy. They're using one kind of hops. They're using Centennial, single hop beer. If Johnny were here, he would be sneezing on this beer. Um, for malt, they're using Pale, C15, and Carapils. So it's a really clean palette of malt. You know, so the hops are Centennial will shine. So they, basically this is a single hop IPA or Pale Ale session style. So let's pop the top on this. Bad boy, get in the sniffer. I'm using the sniffer because we got a stubby bottle here and it looks pretty. Ooh, nice hiss off the top. See what's up. Fatheads crowns are awesome. They haven't been really bottling their stuff for all that long. They're a fairly young and new brewery. I love their Hop Juju. That's my number one uh, DIPA so far of 2014 of the year. All right, let's get a gander at this. Okay, we're semi-hazy, kind of darker amber colored. Um, a lot of yellow hues coming out, but darker amber. Uh, solid one finger heads. Kind of sudsy bubbles when I swirl it. Man, nice glass lacing, but no alcohol legs. And none were expected at 4.9% ABV. Nice looking beer. And I think, you know what, speaking of looking, I think uh, the guy's doing the little peace symbol here. I think maybe Joe sent me this because I do my peace out at the end of the videos. Is that true, Joe? You tell me. Anyways, um, let's get a nose on it. Wow. Lovely. Tropical. Piney. A lot of herbal notes. Grassy. It's not like a big tropical fruit basket, but it's got that 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 sort of floral tropic note to it. It's it's uh, got a, like a sweet honeysuckle sweetness in the background, and that's about it. It's not a real complex smelling beer. Let's taste it. Cheers. Nice. It doesn't suggest that it's 60 IBUs. It drinks a lot easier than that. A lot of the session IPAs that I've had have been basically citric acid in the bottle. Um, Stone's go-to IPA wasn't my favorite. Didn't like that that much. Um, I don't like Oz that much from Duclaw. The I can't remember the the daytime, I think it is, IPA or whatever from uh, Lagunitas. That one was good. The Founders one, that didn't do it for me at all. I can't even remember the name of it. My brain has erased that one, but... Wow, this is a tasty brew. It actually has some balance to it. When you drink it in, you're getting that like piney, resinous taste, grassy and herbal, and a bit of floral notes, and that's backed up by a sort of a caramelly, honey sort of tasting uh, malt backbone. Super smooth. It's not watery. It actually has a medium thin mouthfeel. Most of these tend to be very watery. Um, they, you know, they kind of, they're kind of leaning forward and intending that. But you know what? This is a very good example, probably the best I've had so far, of the IPA sort of version of it. The most tasty one that I've had is this, um, the uh, what is it, the uh, Hop, Hop, Hopnius, I can't ever say that, Hopnius Union from Jack's Abbey. Now, that's a lager, but that was really crisp and clean and had bigger flavor. This beer had bigger flavor than this one does. But this is a very good example of this beer. Quite tasty. I would buy this. I'd buy a six-pack of this. This would be a great beer for a can. Very great candidate for a can. But I do love stubby bottles. I don't know. Just I like that look. Anywho, what do you grade a beer like this? You're sitting here, and I like the you know the pine notes, the resinous notes, the grassy and herbalness, and the and the balance that this beer has. So you're saying, DJ, what do you grade it? Rate beer gives this a 90, and beer I gives it a 90. 
there must be a disturbance in the force because it's rare that those guys ever, you know, meet at the mines. And you know what? I'm going to go with the same route for what it is. I'm going to give this an A minus. I think it's well put together. And the fact that it has balance and so many of these don't have balance and they're just up in your face with hops, 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 alpha acids, I'm bitter, I'm bitter, ha, ha, I'm a high IPA. I could actually drink more than one of these. I could drink more than one of these. But like the other session, you know, India Pale Ale, IPAs, whatever you want to call them that I've had, I couldn't drink more than one of this. I definitely could. And that's really, I think, the standard that you got to measure a beer like this is, could I drink another one? Could I actually session on it and when I really want to? Because the other ones I wouldn't want to session on. I would have one and done, and yeah, that would be it. So, till the next DJ Brew Tube, what do you got to do for me? You got to think globally. You got to drink locally. And you got to support the craft beer movement. You got to help this thing keep growing. So Fatheads and other small brewers will keep putting awesome beers like this that I think this one, this beer and this beer from Jack Abbey's, Jack's Abbey sort of reset the bar on where a sessionable pale ale or pale, you know, malt, you know hops driven beer should be because these both have balance and awesome flavor and repeatability in drinking because that's what a session beer is supposed to be, repeated, repeating drinker in one session or one time period, hmm, right? Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyways, I'll get off my hobby horse now, or my high horse, whatever the hell you want to call it, soapbox. And I got nothing but, oh, and a question for you. Can you, like, rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that like button? Because that would be cool. And now I got a big, uh, what? Oh, yeah, a bunch of love for you. And just like my buddy on the bottle here, I got a big-ass pizza!